everybody. Um, there was a NASCAR race today. Um, I'm not really sure where to start. Uh, I watched the last 35 laps on my TV. Before that, I watched the rest of this race. All before that, on my phone, because I was watching my Razorbacks upset Kansas and go to the Sweet 16. I'm glad I was watching that and not the first part of this race. Because aside from the last mm, 40, 50 laps, this race was a dumpster fire. Um, Austin Hill, as I predicted, gets the win at his home track. Second win at his home track of Atlanta. They both come in the super speedway format. He now has five career wins, three this year, and three of his five career wins are on super speedways. Two at Atlanta, one at Daytona, Talladega is the only super speedway that he has not yet captured. He'll have a chance to do that in a few weeks when we go to the Alabama track. Um, gets the win at his home track. Really special moment for him. You saw his kids and his wife come out onto the front stretch. They were really happy. Um, I was a little upset. Fox is doing headset interviews now for drivers that have wrecked out, uh, which is interesting. I was really happy they did a victory lane interview in the truck race. Abandoned that in Xfinity. The first two races this weekend, Truck and Xfinity today, the racing was good when there was actually racing. The problem was there wasn't a ton of racing because there was a ton of cautions. In the Truck Series, there was 10, an Atlanta record for the Truck Series. In the Xfinity race, there was 11, an Xfinity record for an Atlanta Xfinity race. I'm hoping the Cup guys keep it cleaner, or maybe it's a track issue. I don't know. There was a lot of cut tires, a lot of just minor spins. This race was slow. It was marred by officiating errors and, among other things, there was just a lot of stuff today that made about the first 110 laps, 120 laps of this 163-lap race infuriating. Um, yeah, that's the only way to put it, infuriating, because, I mean, the, the, the end of this race was good. The racing was good, a great finish, Parker Kligerman getting turned in to Austin Hill, Hill somehow corralling at Parker Kligerman, much like Almarola did at Talladega in June of 2020, spinning at a, the end of a super speeder race, coming across the line in the top five, I believe Almarola was third, spinning across the line, Kligerman was originally scored third, he actually ends up in fourth, he won stage two after Austin Hill won stage one. Great one for Kligerman, uh, especially since he'll likely be on the playoff bubble. Um, yeah, uh, great run for Brett Moffitt. Great run for Ryan Truex, but RCR. Creed was second in stage one before uh, something happened. And um, he eventually went backwards. Uh, finish, where did Sheldon Creed end up? 21st. Um... JRM cars had more run-ins today. I believe Barry turned or wrecked Allgaier inadvertently, and then Mayer and Barry had more contact. Brandon Jones has largely been non-involved in most of this JRM stuff, but that's because he hasn't been running up at the front with his teammates. He had another issue early in the race today and only ended up 19th. I'm genuinely getting a little worried because they haven't had that much speed in the car, and he keeps getting involved in incidents. And he's well outside the playoffs right now. Uh, I don't know if they've updated the standings yet or not. If they haven't, we'll just talk about them going into Coda. Um, let's see. Have they? Yes. Yes, they have. Okay. Austin Hill also leads the regular season right now. Five top tens and three wins in the first five races. So right now he would have 2,033 playoff points. That's three wins, three state wins, and 15 points for being the regular season champ. Really, really, really good. Um, yeah. A lot of cautions. I'm not going to go over all of them. I think the Allgaier one was the biggest one um, in terms of wreck. The last last wreck coming to the line was pretty big. Parker Retzloff had a hard hit. Hope he's okay. Um, no, I, I didn't get the full story of this race because I didn't watch the whole thing on my big TV. I was looking at my phone going back to the basketball game on the TV. Um, but just the, the start, we, before we even got started, we had to check pit road speed multiple times. 
uh, race. Um, I think it's supposed to go green around 4.15. It didn't go green until like 4.30, 4.40. And it didn't end until... Um, when? 7.30? It was like an almost three-hour race, which in the Xfinity Series should not happen, especially for only a 250-mile loop. At a track where laps are 30 seconds. Uh, we had that issue. We had a caution on lap two, I think, for Joey Gase and some other back marker. And then from there, the cautions just kept flowing. And then we had an incident that will infamously go down in NASCAR history. Josh Williams was involved in one of those early wrecks. Um, it's, this is an interesting rule. I don't think NASCAR is completely in the wrong for enforcing the rule. It encourages teams to do a good job repairing their cars and not doing shoddy work. But, man, just, if, because, here's the deal. If you're going to put somebody out for a piece of bear bond coming off, when, yes, the applic how well it's applied matters. You ever heard of wind, aerodynamics, contact? That stuff can take it off, too. And so, NASCAR rules, a piece of bear bond came off Josh Williams' car. They said if the car's been damaged and hasn't had a chance to come down pit road, or, or had a chance to take it or wasn't repaired properly, that car's done. It's out of the race. So they told him to park it. And, you know, honestly, he did what they asked him to. Problem was, he pulled a Kyle Busch, only much more extreme, and didn't exactly park it where he was supposed to. He parked it right on the front stretch. Right on the front stretch. Right at the start finish line, got out of the car, gave the two fingers, the, the you know, deuce, um, you know, I'm out, um, salute sign to the crowd. And even though he had been involved in a wreck, NASCAR didn't even bother him taking him to the infield care center. They took him right to the NASCAR hauler. His car was parked at the NASCAR hauler. And as far as I know, he stayed in the NASCAR hauler the rest of the race. Saw a picture from Jordan Bianchi of him kind of waving uh, from inside the trailer. Um, NASCAR's not very happy. Wouldn't be surprised if they gave him a big fine, a big point reduction, and maybe even a suspension for one race. Hard to imagine they'd make that more than one race. These would obviously be actions considered detrimental to NASCAR and detrimental to stock car racing. But that's what got pleasant. That was uh, trending on, on Twitter and all other forms of social media that he did that. Even over March Madness stuff, because it was a big deal. I think this race got a lot of attention. Probably got more attention than... Some bowling fans wanted it to. We had a program alert just past halfway because it was taking so long. It was already two hours in and we were at like lap 80. It took an hour for the first stage to be completed, a 40 lap stage because we had a 20 minute caution period after Williams parked his car and, and all sorts of other stuff happened. Um, I think Josh Williams had a right to be mad, but that's dangerous. You know, don't do that. Show your anger in some other way. He deserves a fine, maybe some points reduction, but I don't think he deserves suspension because I think it is stupid to rewrite the rule. Because, you know, stuff happens in NASCAR. To contact sport to sport where wind and aerodynamics matter, and m more than just poor work, poor application to bear bond can rip bear bond, essentially tape off. Um, so, yeah. Um,. Overall, the first 110, 120 laps of this race were disappointing. Embarrassing, even. That's what Justin Allgaier said. I think the last 40 laps or so saved this from being called like the worst NASCAR race of all time or the worst Xfinity race of all time. Um, I've heard, I heard Justin Allgaier say this place has completely been ruined by Super Speedway. I disagree. The racing is good when there's actually racing. I'm a little worried that the trend of double-digit cautions will continue into tomorrow. Um, um, we'll see. I hope it doesn't. I really hope it doesn't. Um, the track's had a year to wear. Um, I don't think it'd be causing all sorts of tire problems one year in. We'll see. It's the same tire compound, I believe, for all three series that they run at Daytona and Talladega. But those tracks don't wear as, as quickly as Atlanta because it, they're, they're, they're bigger. I think I, I could be wrong on reasoning on that. I don't know. Regardless, it's frustrating. It's frustrating to see this because, I mean, you this... Mm. 
the super speedway races are entertaining because of the close, tight-knit racing. You don't get tight, close-knit racing when you're under caution. I'm just, I'm okay with four or five cautions, a few spins, one big one. But races like this where it's just little cautions, maybe one or two big ones, it's just annoying. And there's no rhythm, there's no flow, there's no pace. I don't know. At least they didn't move to Tefas too. That's all I'll say. Um, okay. Let's let's take a look at these race results. Um, shout out to Anthony Alfredo today for running a really strong race. Riley Herbst ran one of the best races of his career, I thought, today. Justin Haley, the, the college cars just don't have the speed. Chandler Smith is willing that car each week. Hamrick finishes second. Um, especially the 10, though. Kyle Busch, fourth and ninth, I think, in his two races. Haley, 10th. I can't remember where he was at Daytona. But uh, Colin just doesn't have that race winning speed. At all mending or leaving, I think, really hurts their community program. Austin now gets the win. Hamrick second. Ryan Truex third. He was third here last July. And the dude can drive. He's proven that. Second and third the last two weeks. Kligerman fourth. Great run for him. Herbst had a chance for that first win, just couldn't get it done in fifth. Brett Moffat again, sixth. His first year with an entirely new race team, AM Racing. What a job he's doing. Josh Berry, seventh. Solid day after some more adversity. John Hunter Nemechek, eighth after starting on the front row. By the way, speaking of qualifying, Ford had the top eight or nine and kept qualifying today. Insane. Logano on his second pole in like in three weeks. Sam Mayer, 9th, made something out of the day. Haley, 10th. Ryan Seek, 11th. Cole Custer, 12th. What's happening with Cole Custer? I know it's only five races, but Auto Club, would he likely won? Had he not had tire issues and other, you know, whatever issues he had? Yeah, but that was the only race they've really shown a lot of speed. Now I'm getting worried about that double zero. I really am. His teammates outrun him every week. Um... He has not yet been the highest finishing 40 at this year. But in pool, 13th. Wright's coming to the line. Still got home a solid day. Anthony Alfredo was 14th. Deserved the top 10. He ran really well. Clements, 15th. Um, Jeb Burton, 16th. Sammy Smith, 17th. Patrick Emerly, 18th. Brandon Jones, they need to figure something out on that 19, man. I'm telling you, they really do. Uh, 20th was Greg Golding. Creed fell back to 21st. Blaine Perkins, 22nd. Ryan Ellis, 23rd. Chad Chastain somehow brings it home 24th. He had a lot, and I mean a lot, of issues today. Joe Graff, 25th. Kyle Seek, 26th. Retzloff, 27th. Chandler Smith, 28th. Says here he had a rear gear um, incident. Allgaier, 29th. Got spun, got turned. Um, shame for him. You know, Jerry runs fast everywhere, but super speedways, they always really seem to be good. Um, you know. Got, got turned by his teammate. Connor Bosak, 30th. Sage Karam, 31st. Josh Williams, 32nd. Most infamous 32nd place finish. Um, probably ever in uh, in NASCAR history. Kyle Weatherman, 33rd. Jeffrey Earnhardt, 34th. Cash Gall, 35th. Garrett Smithley, 36th. Joey Gage, 37th. Sage Arbacarella, 38th. That's the other guy. Standings. Manufacturer-wise, Chevy is three ahead of Toyota, 26 out of Ford. Unless that's from last night, which it very well may be. Austin Hill, John Hunter, Newmichek, Sammy Smith have all locked themselves into the NASCAR 20 Series playoffs. How about Riley Hurst? Plus 79 to the cut line. How about it? Allgaier, or sorry, Chandler Smith plus 48. Allgaier plus 41. They're both looking solid. Mayer looking solid, plus 33. Cole Custer only plus 24. He's going to make the playoffs, but they need to win a race or show some form of speed. I believe he only has one top 10 in four races, maybe two, but not a great start. Barry plus 25 in ninth. Hemrick plus 10, or sorry, plus 22 in 10th. Ligerman plus 19 in 11th. And Sheldon Creek, currently the last guy in, plus 14 in 12th. Brett Moffat, first guy out, 14 back in 13th. Sieg, 17 back in 14th. Alfredo, 29 back in 15th. Solid, solid start to the year for them. Burton, 30 back in 16th. Jones, 38 back in 17th. Graff, 41 back in 18th. Clemens, 46 back in 19th. 
Let's lock the D7 back in 20th. Um, and then C. Williams and then the rest of these guys. You can find all this on NASCAR.com. Regular season-wise, it's Hill, Nemechek, Herbst, Smith, Allgaier, Chandler Smith, Allgaier, Mayer, Sammy Smith, Barry, Custer, Hammer, Kligerman, Creed, and I believe all the rest um, are the same. Indeed, they are. Riley Herbst is looking really good. He and Nemechek each 46 back of, of Hill for the regular season points lead. Uh, Hill with 248 points. Smith, 77 back. Allgaier, 84 back. Mayer, 92 back. Sammy Smith and Josh Berry each 100 back. Custer, 101 back. Hemrick, 103 back. Kligerman, 106 back. Creed, 111 back. Moffat, 125 back. Sieg, 128 back. And on down the line. So, yeah. Um, coverage was a lot better in this race than the truck race. Still missed a few things. Um, the last 40, 30 laps were really good. Um, first 110, 120 laps were an embarrassment. Gotta fix this. If this happens again in the cup race, then I'm worried for the prospect of Atlanta Super Speedway. Last year was great. All five races there were bangers. Um, and we didn't have this issue of incessant cautions. Both races today, we did. So, um, hoping tomorrow is different. Hoping tomorrow is a is a a clean race. Hoping tomorrow is a good. You know, old-fashioned 400-mile, 260-lap super speedway race. Um, because we need a we need a clean just race. We don't want to ride around under caution. We want to race. After 21 laps today, they are on 14 caution laps, seven under green, twice the amount of laps under caution they had under green, and that shouldn't happen in any NASCAR race. It was it was like the 2005 Coke 600. But Xfinity Series, but Super Speedway Edition. I believe the longest screen flag run was the last one. Uh, like 35, 40 laps until the, the late caution. Didn't go into overtime, kind of surprised me. I th but let's talk about the end here. So Kligerman comes up on the outside. I thought he might get a run. He had the momentum, but it looked like Hemrick kind of came up into him. Or he came down, maybe it was a combo of both. Uh, he gets into Hill, somehow Hill saves it, and Austin Hill wins the race. Um, Kligerman spins, took out everybody. Hemrick, not the best move, all, or, uh, Kligerman not the best move, but it's okay, I can forget, because they're going for the win, going for spots on the last stop at a super speaker race. There's going to be carnage and chaos. This is a crazy day of racing. I enjoyed the truck race a lot more, because even though there were a lot of cautions, they weren't all stupid, you know? And the Josh Williams incident was funny. It was hilarious. Um, but it's unprofessional. I get it. I'm on his side. But it's unprofessional. It makes us look silly. Um, having to check pit road speed twice for people that should be professionals. Silly. Um, running. Having a 20 minute caution period. Silly, unprofessional, stupid. There's a lot of stuff that went wrong this afternoon. There are a few things that went right. Like I said, the racing today was good when there was actual racing to be had. But unfortunately, you don't get to race under the caution flag. Um, hoping this doesn't spell doom for tomorrow or for the future of this track. Because remember, it's the Neen Cup come back here in July. Um... For, for what will be, at least for the Cup Series, counting down, you know, six, seven races with the playoffs. Um, aside from Daytona, for some of the for some of the back markers, some of those cars that aren't up there all the time, it'll be the last chance for them to make the playoffs. Same for the Xfinity Series. They'll be counting down to the end of their regular season, eight, nine races to go at that point. And, you know, but congrats to Lazenil. He's clearly the best super speed race in the field right now. Is he my pick for Talladega? I don't know. Because last year they ran twice that track, and I can't remember where he finished, but he wasn't just completely dominant like he was at Daytona these past couple years or at Atlanta these past couple races. Um, so we'll see about Talladega. But, you know, that could be a very good chance for him to pick up a number four, as could Atlanta, you know, in Daytona later in the year. Um, but what a year from him. You know, I picked him to, to be just outside building up. You know, he already has 15 from wins. Three more from Tierra, he has 18 playoff points. 
And if he continues to be this consistent, he's already 46 points ahead of the next two closest guys in Nemechek and Herbst. He can get on 15 more on top of what he earns from stages and wins the rest of the way. Um, like Cup, they have 26 regular season races. They only have seven playoff races. They only have two rounds, not three, um, before the championship. But he has 21 more chances to go get 21 more wins. Yeah, that's 42 more stages he could win, and if he keeps up the consistency, he very well could find himself accepting the regular season trophy. And maybe even the big prize in Phoenix. Because um, he's proven this year at Vegas. You know? They have the speed to be fast everywhere. To win not just the super speed race. Um, there is no Tal Day in the playoffs for them this year. But hopefully he'll have enough playoff points where he can afford a bad run. But again... Phoenix and California still got top 10s. Still at top 10 speed. So, um, 21 crew is looking good. RCR is looking fast. I know Creed wasn't up there, but he, he was really good today. Saved one at least. Um, so, yeah. That's awesome now. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. Um, let's share the video on the channel for friends, family, anyone who likes NASCAR. Follow the Below the LM podcast as well. NASCAR Catchers podcast. We put out our Atlanta preview last night. So, be sure to check there on either Sunday night or uh, Monday morning for a post-race podcast. Me and Emily and a post-race show for the for the cup race, hopefully, tomorrow night uh, with Emily as well. So thank you all for watching. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm Sam Subs from Spider-Stand YouTube channel. Um, God bless. Peace out. Bye. And subscribe.